haven't seen uh, the actual uh, documents, which I think were put together by uh, a private security company outside of the government. Uh, led by Dewey Claridge. Hold on. Um, and we've seen this included such uh, uh, accusations as that he did declare, you know, things that he had declared and things that he had done in captivity. And I've seen no evidence to support uh, the notions uh, that are outlined in those uh, private companies' reports. State Department responding to the reporting of James Rosen about these documents from a group called the Eclipse Group. Uh, while James was on tonight, we finally got response from the Department of Defense, actually uh, General uh, Robert Ashley, who was the Chief Intelligence Officer of U.S. CENTCOM in 2010. Uh, whether he got these emails, these documents from this group, uh, DOD uh, senior uh, spokesperson saying, quote, it's unreasonable to expect our personnel to recall reviewing specific documents when you consider the vast amount of information processed daily. We have nothing further for you on this. This is about Bo Bergdahl and the situation in captivity in Afghanistan. We're back with the panel. Uh, Charles, what about this element of this story and where this heads? Well, we don't know the veracity of this story, but if you assume for the moment that it's true, uh, I do think it actually helps uh, the, uh, the sergeant because even though it speaks of him becoming radicalized and sort of a sympathizer with his captors at the end, it does talk about multiple escapes at the beginning, one in 2010, one when he was at large for five days and then put in a steel cage which would tend to argue against the fact that he intended to be a defector when he left. We, of course, won't know, and because he's being uh, held in, com I shouldn't use the word held, he's being treated in communicado uh, in a, Germ a U.S. hospital in Germany. We haven't heard from him. I wish we would be able to. The administration keeps saying he's innocent until proven guilty, well, and the only way we're going to know is to hear from him. Uh, we'd like to hear from him. Yeah, uh, A.B., on the congressional aspect of this story, you have the administration saying the reason that they didn't tell Congress was because there was an imminent threat to uh, uh, Berg Bergdahl in Afghanistan. Take a listen to Senator Feinstein about that possibility. No, I don't think there was a credible threat, that, but uh, I don't know. I have no information that there was. So the question is whether uh, this is going to continue to be a big story or whether we're just seeing the tip of the iceberg here. This is going to continue to be a huge story. Uh, the senators who were briefed as well as members of the House this week by the administration on this situation um, were either more disturbed when they came out the other side or they were disputing accounts of whether or not um, Sergeant Bergdahl was actually uh, truly ill and in need, desperate need of medical attention, urgent medical attention, or whether or not um, there was a threat to his life. Um, in addition, um, in, under any circumstances, there's no excuse for the fact that uh, Democrats and Republicans were kept out of not only the negotiations, but even an, a heads up about this, Brett, as you know, they learned about it on television like the rest of us. Um, that's not going to go away because the Congress is very concerned about the way the administration has separated itself um, from a co-equal branch of government. And I think that... Um, you know, in the days to come, you're going to hear, uh, you know, more and more um, from the Congress about their own need to consult with the military about its investigation and to handle the consequences to Sergeant Bergdahl if indeed yeah. he was a deserter, and and also obviously the criteria for holding the five in in Qatar. And yeah, we're talking about a number of different angles to this. Steve, uh, quickly on Time Magazine, uh, they've done some reporting in Afghanistan, and this is the quote, uh, quote, asked whether the Taliban would be inspired by the exchange to kidnap others, a senior Taliban commander affiliated with the Haqqani network, speaking by telephone from an undisclosed location in Afghanistan, laughs. Definitely, he says, it's better to kidnap one person like Bergdahl than kidnapping hundreds of useless people. It has encouraged our people. Now everybody will work hard to capture such an important bird. Thoughts. Well, that was obvious that, that they were a that they were going to say that, and b that they would try to do that. And uh, intelligence officials speaking to members of Congress uh, privately in private testimony have acknowledged as much. There was one who appeared before the Senate Intelligence Committee on Tuesday, National Intelligence Officer for South Asia, who testified matter of factly that of course these 
these five will return to, or at least four of the five will return to the fight. There was no question about that in his mind. James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, in a briefing that he provided, was asked to give a likelihood on a scale of one to ten uh, whether these five would go back to the fight. For four of them, he said nine of ten, and for one of them, he said eight of ten. So this should surprise nobody. We'll do another round on Bo Bergdahl and the situation. We'll talk about a couple of other things and winners and losers when we come back.